Okay guys, so today uh, I'm going to be showing you how to make a setup that is good for raising juvenile uh, uh, newts and salamanders dressed really. Um, so this one is for my Hypsel Trident Orientalis, my uh, Chinese fire belly newts. Um, now basically I'm just, what I'm doing is I'm just uh, uh, changing the soil on this. It was fine how it is, uh, but you just gotta change the soil sometimes. Um, but I decided I might as well make a video on how to how to do it while I was at it. So um, the first substrate I have here is it's uh, really thick. It's kind of like a clay and a uh, dirt mixture. It's really kind of like thick mud almost. Uh, but it's it's really kind of a lot like clay actually. Uh, really crumbly and really um, thick and dense. And I don't really compact it that hard. I just want to try to smooth it out. I don't want it to be loose because then it will just kind of be in big clumps and I don't really want that. Uh, so now I'm going to add uh, these hides and they actually, they really like these hides. They uh, spend most of their time in them. Kind of dig it in there a little bit and then add some behind here so it's closed off. like so okay and then add a few more oh also here's a worm right here actually uh, I found a couple of worms in here and I was cleaning it out which is fantastic that means that uh, that means that uh, when you chop a worm what happens is actually I'm gonna put this there we go. Uh, what happens is you chop it, there's the front end, and the front end can survive for quite a while. Um, and it can actually, even though it's been chopped in multiple pieces, it can actually continue to survive and grow uh, back its tail. And, um, and so what happened is actually many of the ones that I put in here, the front ends oftentimes will escape and uh, they are actually, they got down in here and they actually reproduced. Uh, there are some really small ones in here that I hadn't put in here, so they're actually reproducing, which is awesome. Um, so I'm just going to add this last one and then I'm going to go get some, some more soil. Just a nice belly coloration of some of them. They've grown really nicely, except for this little one. Where is he? Right here. He is really, really small compared to the rest for some reason. Just hasn't eaten as much, I guess. The top layer of substrate, it is a lot finer. It isn't so dense and thick. It is uh, just kind of more of a topsoil. I'm not going to compact it at all. I just don't want it to be all loose and all over the place. Just kind of pat it down. Um, and then uh, on top of this I will add moss and uh, oak leaves the moss is really nice because it uh, adds more hiding areas uh, for the newts and also um, it retains some moisture so it'll keep it moist in here. I don't miss this setup very often at all. Uh, really, I mean maybe once or twice a month. Uh, but what happens is the moss retains a lot of that moisture and it kind of uh, keeps this whole setup moist throughout, uh, throughout that time period. Um, and uh, also, uh, it has a, it doesn't have a mesh lid, it has a solid, just plastic lid, um, so it doesn't lose a lot of moisture, um, but I also am not adding a lot of moisture, so it, it doesn't get, like, sobbing wet, it's just, uh, very lightly moist, and the, uh, the other thing about this is what it does is it allows the, the juvenile newts to have, uh, a choice of what kind of humidity, uh, area they want to be in um, but so it really gives them an option and so they 
can uh, kind of uh, just uh, do whatever whatever is the most comfortable spot for them. Uh, I also added this little feeding dish and that is all it takes. It's very simple, very easy, but it's very, very effective. Now the thing is, is you won't see your needs a lot in this setup, but the good thing is, is since all three hives are kind of right around this feeding dish, um, whenever you add food they will see that uh, the food and they uh, should anyway uh, come out to feed. Um, and uh, also the great thing about this setup is um, you will bring in some insects with the leaves, with the moss, with the dirt, you know, you'll get worms or uh, wood lice or springtails. Uh, you can also collect some and add them to this, but the, the big deal is that um, then they will be in the setup and they could potentially culture themselves so that uh, the newts can have something to eat even when you're not feeding them, especially with the springtails that are very small. With the species uh, that's juveniles are as small as this, uh, it's really important to be able to offer small foods and the spring tail the springtails are really uh, very small so if the springtails get in here and breed and culture themselves really you're not going to have to do um, a ton of feeding because these guys are actually going to be uh, feeding for themselves off of the springtails and so that's why naturalistic setups like this are really nice is because not only can the newts inhabit it and it's very good for the newts but also their prey items can actually uh, breed and stay in here. Okay, and all of them are in. Hopefully they enjoy their new setup. I mean, it's not really new, I just basically just changed the substrate. Because eventually, um, moisture will build up in the bottom and that can uh, lead to problems with gas exchanges and stuff. Um, that's my biggest one right there. He's getting pretty big. Probably two or two and a half inches. Probably right around two. Yeah, that's pretty it. Pretty much it. Very easy setup. That's also very effective. Easy to maintain. Uh, easy to feed them in, and they seem to really enjoy it. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you all later.